All right, we're back again with Ted Thomas, the country's foremost authority on tax lien certificates and tax default investing. Ted, can you quickly review for our customers and our audience what a tax lien certificate is? Okay, sure. I'm happy to do that. Folks, across the United States, the legislatures and the counties have made the law that simply says everyone must pay property tax. So in half of the states, they, they have what they call a tax lien certificate, which means you could earn interest on that certificate. The other half of the states, like California and New York, they say, wait a minute, you didn't pay your tax. So what they're gonna do is put it in default and then they will go ahead and the county treasurer not only will put you in default, but they will also put the property in a situation where they're gonna confiscate. In other words, they're gonna seize the property. So tax lien certificates are something you could earn 16, 18, 24, up to 36%, whereas a tax deed, they're actually gonna take the property away from you. Wow, all right. so. I guess I have a question. Why don't most people even know about this? I mean, I didn't know about it, and I used to be a mortgage broker. I was in the mortgage industry for nearly wow. 20 years. I didn't know about that. I'd heard about tax deeds and tax lien certificates, but I really didn't know anything about how you can make money with them. Why is this such a big secret? Okay, well, here's the challenge. The regular brokerage community, they make their money basically on commission, so they have to sell something. Okay. And uh, or they have to buy something. So they, they, that's how they make their money. Now, attorneys, they make their money by selling you time. You know, basically, you pay by the hour when you go to the attorney. All right. So it wouldn't matter whether it was a financial planner or an investment advisor. These are all commissioned people. The local governments that sell these tax lien certificates and tax deeds, they're always a county government and they won't pay any commissions. So that means all those commissioned people, even stockbrokers, they're not going to tell you about this investment, although the investment could pay you 16, 18, 24, up to 36 percent from the county. In other words, you give your money to the county and you get your money back plus 16, 18 or 20, depending upon the state. They're not even allowed. To, they can tell you about it, but they're not going to get paid. So people only tell you about what they're going to get paid. So let's not say they're all bad people. It's just our system. Our system is such that if people can't make money, they're damn sure not going to tell you about it. So that's what's wrong. <laughs> How true that is. All right. So I have a lot of customers, friends that aren't in the United States. They live abroad, Costa Rica, Canada, Mexico. Uh, do you have to live in the United States to take advantage of this business? This business, when I started, was all hands on. You had to physically be there. Now it's 30 years later. Everything can be done online. So that means if you're watching me right now, you're watching me on a computer somewhere, you can sit at that same computer and we can show you uh, show you how to buy property in any one of the 3,000 plus county auctions that are taking place. There's 3,000 auctions. There's auctions every single day and we can teach you how to do that. Now, let me put a little caveat in there. All right, I have clients in Thailand. I have clients in Singapore, Australia, United Kingdom, most of the provinces of Canada, Mexico City. I actually teach this class in Mexico City and Ontario and Vancouver and all the places. However, you have to have an American bank account. Why? Because they only do business in this country with U.S. dollars. Only do business in U.S. dollars. So that means you can't buy in Singapore using Singapore dollars or United Kingdom using uh, pounds. So you have to have a U.S. account. All right. So do the big banks have offices in those places? Yes, in most cases they do. So I can't say you can do it everywhere online, but anywhere you can get a U.S. bank account, you can buy online doing this whole business. Excellent. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are, are getting pretty excited about doing this, and many of them might think, well, where do I start? Should they start with tax lien certificates or tax deed defaults? What would be your answer to that? It depends upon uh, how your comfort level. Um, I, I, for the first number of years I started this business, I used to take as many as two or 300 people to the auction. And I just taught them how to buy tax lien certificates. Tax lien certificates are easy to learn how to do. It's a super safe investment. Now here's why it's so safe. You raise your hand at the auction, you buy the certificate and you state in an amount that you're willing to pay. So let's say I was in Florida, you could get up to 18%. Well, you don't give Ted Thomas any money. I, I don't want your money, I got my own money. I don't want your money. What you're gonna do with your money is you're gonna invest it with the county. So you invest with the county, now you just sit there and wait. 
In other words, you bought a certificate, you bought a piece of paper, now you're going to go sit on your rusty dusty. When the county gets paid, and 97%, 98% of it will pay you, the county pay, gets paid, they will say, send your certificate back and they will pay you. And that's about as conservative as you can get. That's a predictable, certain, secure investment. Let me say that again. It's a predictable, certain, and secure. Now, the other business is much more entrepreneurial. Now, I like the entrepreneurial because I'm an entrepreneur. So that's what attracted me to business. So they're going to sell tax defaulted property. Starting bid is the back taxes. The back tax. So I'm looking and saying, wait a minute. They're going to start the bid at back taxes? They started. So let's say that it's a $100,000 property. It's two years in default. So there's 5000 in taxes owed. That's where the bidding is going to start. Now, I don't know where it's going to end because it might be a other competitive bidding. It's a public auction. So let's say uh, someone comes in and bids 20000 I said, oh, I think maybe I'll bid thirty. So I bid thirty. What if I get the property for 30000 So now I bought a property for 30000 but the assessed value might be clear up to 100000 So I could buy it for thirty. I'm going to sell it for sixty. I just want to make a profit and move on. I'm not going to go out and try and... And, you know, some of these properties are going to be used and abused. Some of them at auction are junk. Don't buy any junk. Some of them, you just go clean them up. People move into them. So I don't know what you're going to get, but you got to go look at it. So go look at it, then you can decide, can I get 50000 for this? Well, then know what you're going to bid. So you always know ahead of time what you're going to bid, and you always know ahead of time what you're going to sell it for. That's called an exit strategy. Ted, I uh, won't share the uh, county I live in because I don't want any extra competition from anybody on this call. <laughs> but I... Uh... I have my eyes on a couple of properties that are coming up for auction at the end of February. Believe it or not, and I know you'll believe it, one of them has a uh, starting bid of $29,400. i have driven the property. I've seen the neighborhood. It's in my own backyard in terms of neighborhoods. Uh, comparables are around 400 to 425000 In fact, the house next door to it sold within the last six months for 385000 the starting bid is only 29,400 just between you me and the fence post if i get that for anything under $75,000 i'm going to be one happy camper my question to you is this i don't mean to go off the ra rail here a little bit but my question is this can somebody like me go to a physical auction or can i just i know we've talked touch upon this but probably a lot of people might not know this do they have to physically go to the auction or can they do everything just from Online, oh, or is oh, every no, auction no, available no, online? That auction, if the county is doing it online, they will choose an auction company like this. This there's a dozen of those. Uh, one of them could be called. Let me clear my throat. <coughs> one of them is called Bid for Assets. Okay, so they will put the property on there. All right, now uh, they'll put the property and say the twenty. The starting price is just under thirty thousand dollars. That's what they'll say, and they'll also tell you what the tax assessed value is. So it's your job as the buyer, no matter where you are in the world, you're going to go check that property out. Well, you've already driven it, but someone that, that didn't, that hadn't done that, they could hire somebody like a broker to go out there and take pictures. I mean, everybody's got a camera in their pocket, take pictures and show you that. And then you want to decide what you're going to bid. Now, people say, well, Ted, am I going to get that for, for rock bottom dollar? I don't think so. I think there's probably some other bidders out there. But the guy next door, he's going to say, wait a minute. This thing's worth 400000 He's not going to let it go out the door at 29000 He's probably going to bid. Now, what if I was there? Well, I'd say I'd bid up to 30% I'd bid up to thirty on that. So what's 30%? Well, it's 120000 But wait a minute. If I bid 120, it's worth 400. Man, I'm in, I'm in tall, tall grass. That's where I want to be. My That's where is, I want to be. <laughs> exactly. And so if you did get it for 75, certainly get it for that because you don't want to just go to the 120. But that's what a bidding strategy is all about. So that's really your exit strategy. So you say, I know it's worth 400. Can I sell it quickly for 300? If I can do that, I'll pay 120 all day long. And I can show you examples. I've done it online and offline. You can do it all day long. There's nobody to stop you. They're happy to sell the property. All right. So should somebody start with a big city? or a big county, or should they start with a small city in a small county? What would be your uh, recommendation? Just, just start out where you are. Now, I get people that call me from Saskatchewan, which is a big province up in Canada. And so this guy called and said, Ted, I just lost my assets. I said, what happened? 
He said, I had 30 rental properties and the market caved in. I said, oh no. So the market went down so much after 20 years of taking care of rental properties, he's losing it all. He said, Ted, I got to get into business where I buy it and I sell it and I make money. I said, okay. So I taught him to start out very conservatively. Now I'm answering your question and this is going to be a beautiful example for all of you that are watching. So I said, look, buy your first property, just get a residential buildable lot. Why residential buildable lot? Because everybody else grew up in a house. So what do they do? They buy houses. So they're conceived in a house. They live in a house. They know about houses. So everybody's bidding on houses. How about buying a residential lot? Well, I'm going to take all the air out of it because that's going to sell for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar and nobody's going to bid it up. That doesn't mean it doesn't have value. So he did exactly what I said. So he bought the first one. He got it. He was in Canada. He stayed in Canada. Did the whole thing online. Called the broker. He sold it. And the broker made. He said to the broker, "I'm buying it low, sell it low." Turned out, he bought a property for round numbers, thirty thousand dollars. He ended up selling it for fifty-five thousand dollars, and it was worth over two hundred. But he wow. just made a little profit. And but now he knew he could do it, and he could do it online. And I'm going to show you a video of what he did right now. Because the next property, he made over $150,000. Watch this video. My name is Kelly Osmack, and I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm a Ted Thomas student. I had purchased a, a lot in Riverside County, at Riverside. Uh, I purchased it for $35,000. And uh, after I got my title, I listed it. It was listed for a month, and I got a full cash offer of $55,000 U.S. After that deal, I went to the uh, Kitsap County in Washington and purchased a five-acre parcel um, in uh, Kingston, and I paid 131,000 for that property. Uh, it's, it was a, had a 1,300 square foot uh, manufactured home and a barn on the property. Really nice property. I had it listed at. 280 and I received the full price offer in four days. All right, now there you have it. He's sitting at his computer. He bought the first one in Riverside, California, which is right next to Los Angeles. The next one he bought right across Puget Sound from the city of Seattle. So you can do this all over the world. My point is, all you have to do is learn how to do it. All right, so I've heard you say that different states have different rates of return in terms of the tax lien certificates. So there probably isn't a typical return. And different states have different redemption periods where the, the homeowner or the owner of the property can actually redeem that tax lien certificate. Based on your knowledge, vast knowledge and experience, what's a typical re average rate of return or is there an average rate of return? There probably isn't a, a, a number I can, uh, I, I can just pop up and say, but I can tell you this. In Florida, in the month of May, they will have one million property taxes go into default. That means one million property owners will not pay their tax. So anybody can buy any one of those one million certificates. I would say the average return on those is probably going to be, it's not going to be the 18% like we'd like to get. It's probably going to be more around that 7, 8, 9%. But in a 1% market, that's a pretty good rate of return. Now, we can teach you, it's a little complex now, we can teach you how to buy the ones that don't sell. The ones that don't sell, you always get 18%. All right, but this business is such, Florida pays 18%, and a place like Illinois, a tax certificate pays all the way up to 36%. So if you only pay 15 or 18% on your money, how bad is that? So I can't give you an exact number, but I can tell you that they will have so many certificates. Matter of fact, let me just show you. I'll just make a demonstration. Now, I'm not leaving. I'm just going to go over here. I've got a desk right next to me. So I'm just going to go over here to this desk, and I'm going to just get a list and kind of show you, all right, so that you'll get the idea what's going on here, all right? All right, now you can see this says Tampa Bay Times. All right, now in Tampa Bay this year, that's one county. It's called Hillsborough County. All the tax collected, all the... All the taxes are, are listed on the page, now, every, every, every single tax. And this is going to be multiple pages of a newspaper. There's 40,000 certificates just in this one auction. So you can buy as many as you want. They'll all have a somewhat different rate. 
and that's just one county. Let's get a. I mean, let me let me get one for for our, like Miami. Okay. All right. Now this is a. This is the list of tax liens for Miami. All right. Now I'm going to show you the side of it so you can see that there's 65,000 certificates just in Dade, Miami, just that one county. So they, there's so much abundance here, they can't sell them all. And if they can't sell them, you can just wait until the auction is over, and then you can just buy them online, and you'll always get 18%. So can I teach you every little nuance of the business on this one video? No, but you're kind of getting the idea. Wow. One final question as we bring this interview to a close, and that question is this. There's probably a lot of people that are watching this video and are thinking to, you know, you probably have their heads spinning a lot by now. And they're thinking, well, why should I buy tax lien certificates when I can buy tax deed defaults and, and potentially have a much higher upside potential, much more than, you know, a 7 or 8 or 18 percent rate of return? So what would you, how would you answer that question? Okay, well, if you look at my shirt, you're not going to think I'm a conservative investor. <laughs> but I've been all the way to the top, multimillionaire, and I've been all the way down to living in a two-bedroom apartment after flying around in my own jet. So I am a conservative investor. So what you're involved in in tax needs and tax deeds when you get involved is a marathon. There is no hurry. So learn a little bit about tax needs if you want to. That'll just take you a few weeks. Then learn about the tax defaulted property because here's what you can do with tax defaults with tax defaulted property the county's going to list and i'll show you a list i'll show you a list in just a minute the county's going to list the starting price i don't know if you'll get it for the starting bid the starting bid is the back taxes if the bidding isn't going up you can quickly see look i've gone out and evaluated a property like you just mentioned you drove around it you already know it's worth three or four hundred thousand well they're going to give you a minimum bid of twenty nine thousand well, you can just cap it and say, I'm not going above 75 grand. All right. Well, what if you get it for 75 grand? It's still worth the 400 and you sell it for 200 grand. I mean, you can easily do that fourth grade calculation yourself. Now, when you're at an auction, I can tell you right now, I'm, mine aren't doing it now, but your knees will be bumping together. You, know, you have to write a check for that. You're writing a check for that. And yeah. I've done that a lot. I buy online, I buy offline. I'm an investor. I'm an investor, number one. I'm a teacher, number two. And I'm an author, number three. I've written 27 books. I've had bestseller books. I understand this. So it's a marathon. There is no hurry. This has been around for 200 years before I started. You can do this for the rest of your life. Just take your time. Learn how to do it. Don't be one of those armpits that goes to one little quickie seminar and thinks he knows how to do it. You get to get your butt kicked. You need to find professionals. Do we have professionals? My junior coaches have 10 years with me. My junior coaches. We are in the business of teaching people how to do this. We know what we're doing. And if you know what you're doing, this is a great business. I didn't create it. You never can invest with Ted Thomas. You invest with the government, you get a check back from the government. It's that sophisticated. Sage advice from a very knowledgeable, probably the most knowledgeable person in the world when it comes to tax lien certificates and tax yeah. default properties. Uh, myself, as an investor, I'm going to do both. I'm going to buy tax lien certificates because I know I can make a whole lot more with that than parking my money at Chase Bank and getting a whopping 1%. And I'm gonna uh, find properties that I can buy at you know pennies on the dollar and flip them. I don't wanna rent them. I don't wanna have landlord issues or anything like that. I'm gonna take your school of advice and buy low, sell low, make my money, move on to the next auction. Ted, I wanna thank you. Can you please share with everyone as we bring this session to a close, when the date is for your next virtual workshop? Okay. I'm glad you said virtual because nowadays uh, uh, more people want to stay home and learn. So I'm more power to you guys. I'm going to do it the next event on February the 26th. I'll tell you right now, it starts at 11 o'clock in the Eastern time zone. It's nonstop. It does nonstop all the way until 530 in the Eastern time zone. There will be breaks. So we take a little break so you can run out to the kitchen and grab a sandwich. You can drink uh, all the drinks you want to drink, you know, and refresh yourself. You can sit in your easy chair. You can learn while you're sitting on your rusty dusty. I can tell you right now, and you can watch because you'll see everybody that's on the event. 
90% of the people that start that event are still there at 5.30 that night. Why? Because it's content driven. You will find an overwhelming amount of content. Now, if you learned a lot in the past 15 minutes that you've been with me, just imagine what I could do with you if we had six hours together. So I want to see you get registered. That's for the 26th. It's going to start at 11 o'clock. It's a very small fee to pay. It's usually 97. We already made an agreement with Rich. We do it for 47. So 47. So you're going to pay about six or seven bucks an hour. You pay the landscaper more than you pay me. But you want to be there from 11 o'clock right through. You don't want to take any breaks. You can bring your family and they can watch too. So you can spread the cost around the whole family. This is a dynamite way to make money. I've been doing the same thing, teaching it for 25, but doing it for 30 years. Okay, so that is Saturday, February 26, 2022, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Ted, I was on your January just about a week ago, actually a week ago today. I was on your workshop. There was, I think, around 135 people there. And right. just as you just said, uh, six hours later, there was 133 people there. Two people in six and a half hours dropped off. And one of those people was actually someone I invited, and he had to drop off. He didn't yeah, want right. to. He had to because he had another prior commitment that he had to go to. So you really had one person in six and a half yeah. hours that didn't stay the entire time. Ted, thank you so much for taking the time to share all this with my audience. Appreciate it. number three.